when I'm feeling not so great around someone or their energy is like, Oosh, um, I literally pretend that I put up this invisible like shield. <laughs> I know it sounds strange and weird, but like, I literally pretend that I, there's an invisible shield and like, I can see out, but nothing can come in or definitely not their energy. In. Welcome back to another episode on Find Joy with Joyen, the podcast that is all about helping you live and lead a life with joy. I'm your host, Joyen Chan, and every Wednesday, we are giving you access to the world's best and brightest minds in their fields on our show. Listen in as these leaders impart their wisdom, inspiration, and stories to empower you to live joyfully with intention, passion, and purpose and celebrate the struggles and overcome the challenges we may face each day with the tools and insights that we are going to share with you. Whether you are looking to improve your relationship, find your passion, learn how to embrace the present moment, deepen your spiritual connection, or learn the magic of manifestation and law of attraction to attract more abundance, this podcast is here to guide you every step of the way. As your host, I am also challenging myself to dig deeper to learn and unlearn and ride along with you. We are not here to tell you how to live your life because it is your life. But this life is all that we have right now. So my friend, why not live our life to the fullest? So I hope these conversations and stories will guide and inspire you to live your life to your highest potential and a life that you are proud of as you continue to grow and evolve in your own journey. So if you are ready to start living a more passionate, purposeful and joyful life, join us every Wednesday on Find Joy with Joyanne for inspirational stories, powerful message, fun conversations and empowering thoughts with me and my special guests and friends. And now without further ado, let's dive into today's episode. This episode is sponsored by Get the Law of Attraction. If you have been listening to this podcast, you will know that I am a big believer of the universe and the law of attraction. Get the Law of Attraction is a spiritual and inspirational company that gives you something really good like chocolate chip cookies to feed your soul and your mind every single day. They provide daily Instagram posts and reels on the universe, gratitude, spirituality for your headache life. They also have an educational course on the Law of Attraction and Gratitude Journal and their links are in the show notes below. Go to their website and use promo code JOYAN, J-O-Y-A-N when you sign up to get $25 off. I can't wait to introduce to you our guest today who is an intuitive leadership expert, healer and smellologist, a spiritual consultant, intuitive best-selling coach, psychic medium, animal communicator, HR advisor, speaker and a deaf expert. He is also a four-time number one international best-selling author and his vision is to inspire one billion with a capital B humans to heal and therefore smell from the inside. As an intuitive business coach and healer to LGBT game changers, he combines his passion for corporate America, coaching acumen, and metaphysical of intuition and mediumship. Ultimately, he helps his clients to identify the roots of their challenges, heal their inner strife to find happiness again, reframe and re-engage their past, present, and future, enhance their intuitive abilities and mentor them to build a better legacy, future, and fulfilling life for themselves and everyone around them. Tell me a welcoming, the highly intuitive, the one and only, Seth Elliott Santoro. (laughs) Thank you for that. That was amazing. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here with you. You are amazing. I just couldn't <laughs> believe when I was reading the bio and doing research, like, this guy just has like so many titles, you know? Yeah. And so I'm so honored and so grateful to be able to sit down with you as well, all the way from LA. And I have so many questions. But yeah. the first thing I want to start is, I'm sure this is a question that many of you ask you all the time. So when and how did you first discover your psychic abilities? So my entire life, I've always felt things about people, um, but it wasn't until uh, about 10, 12 years ago, I, um, I broke a pattern of dating kind of 
unavailable men. <laughs> like I just like two people in a row that it was just, it, they just, they couldn't love me the way I wanted to be loved. And I woke up and I was like, I deserve so much better. And the second time I woke up and said the same thing the next day, like the world opened up to me. I could not escape information that was coming to me. For example, I would go out to eat with some friends of ours and, and all of a sudden I would just feel like someone would mention like their mother or their father or whatever. And I didn't know that they were deceased or, or, you know, no longer alive. And I would just start feeling information um, to the point where at some point someone started like ask me like, what are you, are you a psychic or something? And I was like, I don't know. This just all of a sudden starts happening to me. And, you know, so, and I didn't really have any friends or, or anything like no mentors, you know, I had seen it on television. Right. But I hadn't experienced it myself, nor did I know anyone. So I, I reached out to a couple of psychics and then they kind of included me in a couple of classes and I started practicing and learning, but it really took me about nine or 10 months to understand what was happening to me because it was nonstop. I mean, now uh, it comes like now I can, I don't want to say control it, but I want, I have a much better handle on it now. Right. So I can turn it on and turn it off. Um, but back then it was just all the time, nonstop. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> yeah, so I had no idea what was going on <laughs> for a while. And how did you feel about it? Did you feel kind of scared or, unsure or confused well i think i would have been i would have felt more scared had the information not been like 99 percent accurate right so <laughs> if i was just getting information that wasn't landing anywhere then yes i believe that i probably would have thought i was you know hearing voices literally hearing voices um but I, I knew that my information was accurate. So I knew it was coming from something bigger than me. And I mean, I had seen the sixth sense. I had, I had seen Long Island medium. I was like, I knew what it was, it was, but I just didn't think it was happening to me. Um, so it, it took me a while. That's why it took me kind of 10 months or so to start coming out again. Right. Like the first time was that I was gay. The second time was that I'm a medium and you know, it's, it's, yeah. It's so, yeah. So why, why, why do you think it happened for you? Why do you think they chose you in a sense? Because I am someone who love, would love to have psychic gift. And to be honest, <laughs> I'm just yeah. like not receiving anything, not now. And um, so why do you think it happened for you? Like why, why do you think you were chosen to have this gift? I, I guess I'm still trying to, f I'm still figuring that out. I, I know that when I was five years old, I remember where I was. I remember I was standing and I remember I want to change the world. I want to heal the world. And at that point I, I was five, right? So I was like, well, maybe I could be a firefighter or maybe I could be a figure skater or maybe I could be a, a lawyer or an actor. Like those were my thoughts at five years old. Because the, the ultimate idea was I wanted to get famous and then and then be able to give back, make lots of money and then give back to the world. So I believe I was chosen because I'm up to a bigger game and I know that I'm supposed to help people. I, I just know that in my being. And I feel like this is, you know, I don't even think that it's the mediumship as much as everything else. I mean, like, a, I, you know, you mentioned everything, but like there's other things that I do as well. And I feel like I can intuitively be guided to what the person needs to hear, right? Or what they need or what we need to work on to move them forward and move them through grief or move them through loss or move them through their trauma uh, to get to the other side, you know, which is essentially finding their happiness again. So I imagine that, the universe or spirit or God was like, here you go. <laughs> like, best of luck to you, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. so, so how do you receive information? Do you see things or do you hear things? Or like, I just don't understand because I'm a psychic, I'm not a medium. So how do you receive, right. you know? And I, I am someone who is quite intuitive, but I, Yes. Well, once said to, uh, I remember there was a guest on my show and she said things like, um, you are so intuitive that you use your reasoning to 
to, I don't know, like block your intuition or something like that. So I'm just not receiving, or maybe I am, but I'm blocking it or I'm not accepting it, you know? So um, how do you receive your information from the higher source? Right. So first off, I want to definitely agree with you that you are very intuitive and I, and I, and I believe that everyone can develop their intuition and develop their psychic awareness. And so I would just want to say that first. Secondly, um, you know, I experience a lot. So I receive, you know, there's all sorts of things. So I do see, I see a lot in my mind, which is called clairvoyance. Um, I also feel, um, a lot. So if you're feeling sad or anxiety or anxious, like when my husband feels anxious, I can feel his anxiety, right? So that's called clairsentience. Um, sometimes I just know things. Um, it'll just come to me and I don't know where it's coming from, but I just know it. So that's claircognizance. Um, I also hear things every once in a while. That's clairaudience. Um, and there's other things too, but those are kind of the primary ways that I... I receive information. Um, does that all make sense? Yeah. I feel like, yeah. I'm, I feel like I'm totally missing one. But you, you mentioned about your husband, and I when I was doing my research, I saw that he is also a psychic medium. If I'm not he wrong, he is. He is. Yes. Oh my god! Tell me about that. <laughs> well, that's how we met, right? It was. It was so many things had to conspire for us to meet. Um, so he was in South Africa. He was, he's, he's South African. I was in LA and like things had to meet. I went to something in London and then I met friends of his that he had like, it was just like the whole world kind of, you know, like had, had a hand in it. And so mutual friends introduced us and I was like, Oh my God, he's South African. He must have an accent. And then I saw pictures and I was like, Oh my God, he's hot. And then we started talking and, you know, being both psychic mediums, we, didn't even really ever need to talk about that stuff, right? Because we understood it. And we still to this day understand like, you know, when he's seeing someone or I'm feeling something or like, we get it. Like you, we don't need to explain ourselves. Like, but both of us have been in relationships prior that it was that we basically broke up with them because either they didn't believe us or we had to continue to explain ourselves. So, so it's actually really nice to be with someone that I don't need to explain what I do, like he supports me, I support him, you know, we even do a reading together called the married, married mediums reading. And it's like an hour and a half long. And like, we both sit down with the client and we do the reading. That sounds like a perfect relationship to me. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, <laughs> it's good. It's good. But at the same time, you also can't hide because they know, you know, your partner knows everything, right? You can't hide. You... Well, yes, yes, yes. I mean, I think we still have the same challenges as every other relationship, other every other marriage. However, we have, I mean, we've been together almost five years now. So like, but we know, it feels like we've been together for 25 or 30 years, just based upon how well we know, we know each other. But we still need to communicate because sometimes I forget and sometimes he forgets that like, I can't read his mind all the time. Like, sometimes I can read his mind, you know, like being with someone, you get familiar with their faces and their, how they think, right? But with us, it's it's like two steps further, yeah. right? So, so yeah, it's, but never a dull moment. I mean, there's always something happening yeah. in our lifestyle. So you also do a lot of things like, um, you're also a deaf expert. And I'm just, and I remember I, I was watching an interview earlier of you on another show and you talk about your love death. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. How many people you know are going to say yeah. that, right? So, I mean, why do you love that? Uh, I'm just, a, I'm, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with it, be, with it because no one talks about it. Like, we need to talk about it more. And I, I only call myself an expert in it because, one, it's provocative, right? Um, and it's effective, right? Being an expert simply means that you have studied something more than other people. I have sat with hundreds and hundreds of grieving people. I have connected with hundreds and hundreds of spirits on the other side, thousands probably of spirits, right? So like I, and I've witnessed death myself. So like I've experienced death from all sorts of sides and I want to talk about it. I like talking about taboo subjects. Like my children's books are all going to be 
taboo subjects you know, that I like to say yummy subjects because we need to talk about these things. And, you know, I don't know about your culture, but my culture is definitely does not like to talk about death. So, and it's, and it's like, <laughs> I think there are three definites in this world, death, taxes, and then adversity. And so how do you not talk about the one thing that is certain in this life? Right. Um, and I, and I like to dispel, I like to, I like to help people understand that death can be scary, but death is a part of life and death is natural and we need, we get to be okay with it. I mean, I understand it. It sucks when someone dies. I mean, I get that. And I, or it sucks when an animal dies, you know, I, I get that. Um, but it's, it is to be expected. Um, so uh, that's why I just, I just, like, I could talk about it for hours and hours and hours and not get bored. Like, when people bring up death, I'm like, what? What? Okay, let's talk yeah. about it, you know? I think it's a beautiful reframe because, like you said, <laughs> it's something that we can never avoid. And it's just part of the journey of being a human being. And yes, and yes, I, yes. I'm also quite... I personally, I'm not afraid to die myself, but I'm afraid to see my family or my parents die, pass away one day. And so I sure. always remind myself that sure. they are never going to die because is we are just, you know, we are not our body, right? We are a spirit. We are a spirit. We are never going to die. We're just going to return to source. And I'm not sure whether you believe like life, you know, like past life or, you know, like um, incarnation, the, the kind of thing. Um, so do you believe that we yes, do yes. have many lives and it's just one of it? Yes, absolutely. I believe that, like you said, we're spirit, we're soul, we're part of the source. And I do believe, like, I believe that I'm, I believe that I'm an old soul. So I believe that I've had a lot of lives and I've made a lot of mistakes in those lives and I've learned a lot. Right. So I feel like in this life, I am now kind of reaping the benefits. Like I'm, 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 I have this wisdom that I really don't know where it came from. I really don't like my mother, my entire life. She said, Oh my God, you're an old soul. Like just the way you've conducted your entire life, you know, you have lived before many times. And, and so I definitely believe in past lives and I definitely believe in, I definitely believe in reincarnation. Um, and I know just like with my husband, I feel like he and I both have been through so many things in our past lives that here we're supposed to do great things, you know, like we've supposed to take everything we've learned and apply it and help other people. Do you believe it? Um, yeah, I would love to believe it. Uh, it, it. And I did have some reading before where people read about my past life and talk, or share with me like, where okay. am I in the past life and why am I having this? Like, you know, like the comic cycles or something like that. I'm not an expert at it, but I love to do readings and to get some insights yes. about why I do the things that I do today, you know, in this life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it's very interesting yes. to talk about that. And you also talk to animals, right? And, yes. And yes. Um, so can you talk to us about that? Like, why do you want to first, first and foremost, why do you want to communicate with animals? Um, and how do you communicate with them? And maybe you can share with us an experience where you had the best experience or encounter ever with a psychic, I mean, with an animal. Yeah, I, I can think of a couple things. Um, I, I don't know. I didn't even know I could talk to animals. Let's say it that way. These gifts that I have, they keep kind of shifting and, and I keep getting more. And I'm really grateful for all the ones that I have. Um, but I was in a re I was in like an intuitive reading, which I consider talking about people's not so distant past, their present and their not so distant future, right? So like a psychic reading, I guess, to most people. Um, and she asked, Hey, can you talk to my dog? Because I'm pissed at him. And I was like, okay. And then before she said anything else, I was like, Let's talk about the bowls because you have two like bowls that are right next door to each other, right? Like you keep them on the ground. One is water. One is like food. And I feel like he constantly gets the water in the food dish or he constantly gets the food in the water dish. She's like, oh my God, that happens all the time. And then I like, and then I just leave the water and I was like, don't do that. That's cruel. Like, why don't you get one of those things that like is elevates them off the ground and puts them a couple inches apart from each other. So she got one and he was like the happiest camper ever. So like she, so then she starts telling people 
like Seth talks to animals. So then she gave me all these clients, sent me all these clients and she even sent me like a couple missing dogs. She's like, Oh my God, like you have to help these people, you know? So there's something there. Uh, but the best story ever, well, that's a good story. Um, when I was in South Africa, we went to a cheetah re rehabilitation center and, um, while we were there, I noticed that the, there was a black leopard there and I noticed that he was favoring his back. Well, he, I don't know if I felt it or he told me or whatever, but I knew that his back right leg was really sore and like arthritic. And the owner at some point walked by and it was, you know, me and a bunch of South Africans. So um, she's like, where are y'all from? And then they, everyone said different places, right? In South Africa. And I was like, well, New York via Los Angeles. And she's like, oh, talk to me. And so I started talking to her and I knew she was the owner because I had done research on this place. Um, and I said to her, you know, I just want to let you know too that your black leopard, he has some like arthritis happening in the back right leg. And she's like, how could you possibly know that? Um, and I was like, because I, I, I guess I talk to animals sometimes. And she's like, are you kidding? So she like kept my husband and I and our friend. And she's like, she's like, she sent the rest of the group off to the rest of their tour. And she's like, you three come with us. So she's like, I want you to talk to Mary. And I was like, who's Mary? And she's like, you'll see. So they, she takes us into this like super special area, you know, and she takes us literally, she gives us to a handler and says, this is Mary. And then she like goes over and pets Mary. And I'm like, oh my God, Mary's a cheetah, like a full grown cheetah. And so she literally sends us with the handler into this enclosure with Mary. And I'm like, oh my God, we are like, like we pet Mary. I was like, oh my God, you know? Anyway, point is Mary um, had some type of cancer and they were deciding whether to do surgery or not. And she was like 13 years old. And when I tapped into her, like she knew immediately that we could speak with her. Um, and she kind of acknowledged cats are really finicky. <laughs> like dogs are super open and talk to you in visuals. I think you asked too, like, how do I see? So I receive a lot of information from dogs, like visually, like they send me images, but cats are, are much more complex. And so cats talk to me in all sorts of ways this cat knew and then she literally said to me like i i know that i have far less days ahead of me than i do behind me and and started with that and i was like oh my god you're brilliant and then she told me like that she doesn't want to get surgery and that like she would just rather like live out her days um she had a pretty like pretty good life for gina <laughs> Um, and she was like, I, I'm, you know, it's okay. I'm, I'm okay to die. And, and my husband read her too. Um, and he doesn't, he doesn't say that he reads animals, but I know he does. So when we went back, we told her all this stuff. Um, and she was like, okay, that's what I was feeling myself, but I didn't want to like do anything until I felt like, until I knew. And she's like, and now I know. And then I started feeling this other cheetah come through, like, like psychically. And it turns out her cheetah, her very first cheetah, who died like the year, had died the year prior. And so I started giving her this reading for this deceased cheetah. And that was the first time I had connected with a deceased cheetah. Um, anyway, so yeah, like it's it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, and I don't know if they necessarily talk to me or if, I, or if they're sending me, if they're also spirit and they're sending me messages, right? Like, like when I do readings for people, Sometimes I feel like I'm grasping for information and sometimes I feel like they're right here talking my ear off. <laughs> like they're just like, oh my God. And then this, and then this, like I had one client once that I literally told her her eight qu questions. Like she had eight questions and I knew she had eight questions. So I'm like, okay, you have, you have eight questions. She's like, how could you possibly know that? I'm like, cause he's telling me. And I was like, let's make this fun. And he said, let's make this fun. Let's go from the, the last question to the first question. And she's like, and we did it one by one. And I was like, oh my God, if only every reading could be like that and be that clear, you know? Um, anyway, okay. No, I'm sorry. I've talked no, a lot. Go ahead. I, I am having goosebumps yeah. while you are talking, sharing that. But anyway, yeah, really? it's the first time because it's a, the story that I have never heard before, like, to be honest, is like, I never talked to anyone who can talk to animals just like you. So it's really, it really is like oh. something new to me. And I, I just like, I feel like I'm there with you, like, you know, the cheetah and like, so 
um, for anyone also wanting to develop their, you know, um, intuition, I would say, I wouldn't want to say psychic because, but intuition, want to be more intuitive. Um, how do we do sure. that? Like, can anyone really become a psychic? Or, you know, I know everyone can be intuitive. Everyone is intuitive. But really, if I personally, if I want to become like yeah. a psychic, you know, how do I, how do I do that? I do believe that everyone can I think there are levels, right? So I think there's intuition and then I think there's psychic information, which, so intuition is mostly about yourself and then sometimes others. Psychic is always about someone else or something else. And then there's like mediumship and I think there's like, and then you talk to angels. So I feel like it goes up, right? Um, I believe that everyone is intuitive and I believe that everyone can develop their psychic abilities. I believe that we are in, like we don't use most of our brain anyway. And I feel like, it's very, very subtle. Like when I connect with animals or when I do readings, it's very subtle to the point where sometimes it's like, can you turn up the dial a little bit? Can you turn up the volume, you know? Um, but it's very subtle. Um, and how do you develop it? I mean, honestly, like I would say, like find someone that you connect with or find a, a psychic in your neighborhood or in your that on, online that you think is, that you feel connected to or have an energy with or vibe with um, because I feel like there's all sorts of exercises that you can do. Um, I've, I've, I have, have, I've had a couple courses like this and it's always fun. People come in, they're like, I've never done this before in my life. And then they read for people like all these things because they have no in inhibitions, right? They're just like saying what they're feeling. And, and that's like what you're feeling is usually intuitive or psychic. You just don't realize it. Um, so there's all sorts of exercises you can do. Um, I definitely believe in meditation. I definitely believe in yoga. I definitely believe in calmness and quietness um, and silence. Um, I, I'm not saying you have to meditate like five hours a day, um, but recognizing that space, that quiet space or meditative space. I don't care if you're laying down. Like, like I don't like to... I don't like to formally meditate. I like to lay down or sit in a chair or something like, um, but to, f to feel that space and to listen because the information that you receive is again, so subtle and so quiet that if you're not listening for it, you're not going to hear it. Um, but there are so many exercises, you know, like that one can do. Um, I mean, you can pull, pull aside a friend and be like, you know, do you have a sister? Great. Okay. So think about your sister. Think about her. I'm going to tell you everything I'm feeling about your sister, for example, right? Or their be other best friend or their mother or their father, you know, d dead or alive. It doesn't matter. And you can literally just focus on them and then focus on their sister or their brother or their mother or their father and listen for what comes um, or write it down. Some people feel better writing it down at first, um, but th that's just one tiny way of developing and and um does that help yeah 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 totally okay. but how do we know whether we the the information sometimes maybe we receive messages or like you know just some some information how do we know that is coming from our intuition or um uh, coming from you know our spirit whatever you call it you know how do we know whether it's coming from our intuition or is something that is just coming from our mind, you know, that things that we just talk to ourselves about, you know? I understand. It's a, it's a challenging question to answer for someone who, um, but I'm going to do my best. Um, when I'm thinking, I'm very clear that I'm thinking. When it's not my thoughts, I'm pretty clear. I'm like 90% clear of when it's not me that's talking. For example, <laughs> sometimes in like what just happened, sometimes in readings, my spirit guides or your spirit guides or whoever I talk to, angels, whatever you believe in, sometimes they'll be like, that wasn't a great answer, Seth. Like, let's reframe it and say it this way. You know, and I know that's not my mind, right? Um, but I am critical on how, how I say things. But during podcasts, like, I don't have time to like think about things like you just I just go with it so they do and they're like yeah maybe you should say that again like this right so uh, I I'm 
I think the more you do it, the more you practice it, the more you'll understand and discern where you end, where your mind ends, and where the spirit or higher beings begin. Um, so I think it's a learned behavior. That's what they're telling me to say. I also, th- I believe that we receive information when we're ready to receive it um, ourselves, right? Like if you and I were to do a reading, I would tell you all the things I feel like you need to hear now. But because it's you, I mean, this, this even happens to me, because it's me, if I'm not ready to hear it or receive it, then I won't hear it. Um, I I would, I would invite you to continue trying and or watch for signs outside of the meditation, right? So like after you come out of your meditation, watch for signs about your question. Like, a, 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 you know, like if you ask for how many blah, blah, blahs, like should I do or blah, 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 like look for the fours, look for the sixes, look for, look for information that outside of yourself or a song that plays on the radio or a friend that calls you, you're like, Oh my God, I was just thinking about you. Like, like that kind of, um, or you read something or you see something online. It's so amazing. I believe that they work in all matters in all like social, like they can speak to us any way they want to. So like, whether it's a post, they're like, okay, yes, like, let's do that. Or if it's someone else, I believe you will hear the answer, but just not necessarily in that necessarily in that moment when you're asking for it, um, which is aggravating. I know, I know, because I, I have the same challenge sometimes. <laughs> I'm like, really? Why won't you answer me? <laughs> you know, but then like that day I'll read something and I'll be like, oh my God, there it is. Right? Like, that's the answer I was looking for. And sometimes I would like to say that, you know, sometimes the, the message that I receive is through guests like you. You know, it's like I, I see them, I see you guys as my angels or like messenger to come and deliver the message to me and my listeners. Because I believe people who are listening to this right now, watching this right now, they are also ready to receive this. If not, they wouldn't be here. Right. If not, they wouldn't be connected. And yeah. yeah. So. Thank you so much for sharing. And now I want to talk yeah. about you. You are you call yourself the smellologist. I mean, what does it mean? Because my podcast is called Find Joy Joyant, and it's all about finding happiness and finding joy from within. So tell me about that. So I didn't give myself that name. Actually, other people have given me that name. So it's a very hard word to say. So maybe someday I'll make it better. But smileologist, essentially, it's someone who studies and researches how to help people smile. And my clients who have been, um, let's say, in a sad space or a situational depression that I've worked with, I've helped them to reframe is the best word that they're giving me right now their lives and how they how they respond in life and it i'm gonna tell you this because they're asking me to tell you this but i believe that when i talk to someone i put them in a little circle right and i let them fill it i let them tell me information And so like the circle starts filling, but there's little holes and all of a sudden, like something will, they'll say something and it will click and like the circle becomes perfect. And I'm like, oh my God, that's, that's it. And so I'm like, this is what we need to focus on this, 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 and this, like, that's what we need to move you forward um, to a better spot, to a better space. Um, So I really talk to people and I, and I, people talk to me, people like open up to me. People are super vulnerable with me and I love that. Um, And they say that, you know, they're like, you need to, they're like, you need to have a podcast. You need to like have a TV show. You need to like, the energy that you bring is just like incredible. And, you know, and I, yes, to all those things eventually, um, but I believe it's that energy that helps people. Like I'm constantly sending people healing when I'm working with them. And I don't even think I'm conscious of it sometimes. (laughs) And, but I, when I am, I'm like, I'm sending you healing right now. Like as we're talking and they're like, I think, thank you. I'm feeling something. And I'm like, okay, great. But I think I unconsciously or subconsciously send healing to people. I think it's, 
what I'm meant to do on this earth, you know? That's beautiful. I want to talk about depression because I personally okay. went through depression, and which is why I started this podcast, to be honest. And it was oh. like three years ago when COVID happened. And I was actually, <laughs> um, you will love this because I was suffering from what you call that, the high functioning depression. The, the other word for that is, I don't know, like, smelling depression or something like that, right? You're actually right. smelling on the outside, but you're depressed on the inside. That was me. And how do we, for people who might be going through, you know, a dark period of time in their life or they are going through some really difficult challenges or they're feeling, you know, they are in working in a tunnel and they don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. How do you help them heal? I mean, what is the first step? I feel like the first step is them acknowledging that they need outside support, outside help, outside championing, outside coaching, outside. They need something else and something more than what they're doing. And I've been there too. I mean, I had therapy for 17 years. Like I, I, I know that there are resources out there for people. So the very first step is acknowledging that you need help. And I feel like that's where a lot of people don't want to do that because they feel like if they say they need help, then they're messed up. Like we're all messed up. Like, I think we all get to, like, we're all messed up at certain times in our lives. And that's why I love the song, like, it's okay not to be okay, because that you, you need to acknowledge that it's okay not to be okay and ask for help. Um, whether that help is a therapist, whether that help is a friend, whether that help is support, whether that help is a coach, you know, um, or a course, we must, like, as a society, as a humanity, like, acknowledge that we need the help. And I think that's really hard for people. Um because I believe wholeheartedly in therapy and I, and I believe the, I have, I have a friend that calls herself an intuitive therapist. And I was like, that's amazing. Like, you know, like I feel like I do that, but I just call it intuitive coaching. Um, so, and also find someone that you feel connected to that you feel you can be vulnerable with that you feel open to. And that's someone that you would actually want to hang out with. I know that sounds weird, but like if you're opening up, and being vulnerable with someone and no matter what culture you're in, that's, that's challenging, right? Or it can be challenging. Like find someone that makes you feel or, or that helps you feel like, yes, like tell me, I'm curious about your life. I want to help. Yeah, I remember when I was depressed, I, I reached out to just one or two friends that I could really open up to and I know they would accept me or love me no matter what right? right it's really important because uh it was quite it, because it was the, at, at the beginning of the pandemic and everyone you know we don't want to talk about mental health it's like a taboo like you said in the beginning um and now i'm i'm glad to see that people are starting to to embrace that and to yes. really talk about mental health like openly and publicly and on an international platform so yes. it's really a progress that we have made a lot you know so far so um I so really hope so yeah it is it is my plan um you know like in my children's books as we, as we talk about taboo subjects the first one was about the pandemic the second one that recently came out is about a divorce two women getting divorced the next one is going to be about um a a, a, a boy child that feels like he's a girl um you know a transgender story let's say and then um and then it's going to be a pet passing away in the house, right? And then I, and then I'm going to do a mental health one, and then I'm going to do an like a family with an alcoholic. So like, there are so many stories that I have yet to tell. But to your point, like, mental health is so important to talk about and not, um, and not throw under the rug anymore, right? Like, it's we need to we get to talk about it because everyone at some point in their life suffers from some type of mental health issue some more than others and some worse than others, but we all face those issues. And yeah. And I think people are scared to talk about it. And I mean, I don't want to laugh. I just, that's, it's, it makes me sad, you know, that people don't feel like they can talk about it. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I can, I also can feel the energy here. Um, so I, my, my other question that I have, I just want to, you know, go back to your, psychic abilities like you can feel energy i'm sure you know and so how do you protect yourself how do you protect your own energy when you can just feel energy how do you set boundaries you mean for myself or for like or to tell other people how to protect themselves for yourself 
Okay. I also think, I also think that it's important for people to mm. do the same thing because sometimes there's toxic people in their office. Yeah. Sometimes there's toxic people in their life. My favorite thing to tell people, there's like two things. When I'm, um, when I'm feeling not so great around someone or their energy is like, Oosh, um, I literally pretend that I put up this invisible like shield. <laughs> I know it sounds strange and weird, but like, I literally pretend that I, there's an invisible shield and like, I can see out, but nothing can come in or definitely not their energy ahead of me. So that's what I do with certain toxic people, other people that are just like bothering me. Like if I have a little fight with my mother or if I fight with a good friend, like I will I'll pretend that I have a catapult in my hands or like a slingshot and I slingshot them away from me to get their energy out of my space. And sometimes it takes about 20 times, you know, if it's my mother or someone or my, you know, like, I mean, it just makes sense. Sometimes, sometimes I even do my husband. I'm like, you, yeah, like right now, I'm just, I just need you out of my space. So there are two techniques that work. And I literally, it's all, I tell all my clients that, and they do it and they just, it's, it's just an invisible shield. Like I'm protecting myself. When I'm working with clients, I think it's just understood. It's something that's like understood that like when they leave my screen or when they leave my house, like they take all their, they take all their stuff with them, right? Their people, their dogs, their animals, their lives, everything goes with you. Um, only once in a while do I have to like kind of cleanse myself. And then I'm like, okay, whew, like I need to get them off. And, but I, I'm very lucky that way. My husband, it, it um, he, he is much more sensitive than I am. So it's, it's, um, he's also been psychic since he was four. So like he had a very, um, incredible experience, you know, growing up. Um, but he has a harder time, um, like, like he needs to clear, like he's so good about it. He needs to clear people out of his space where I'm like, eh, you leave, you're out, you know? Um, but he is very, very, um, directed about it and very like consistent. Whereas I'm like, eh, um, I should probably actually protect myself more, but, um, but I'm good. <laughs> you invited me to ask you that question. Um, since you're yes. a psychic I'm, and you can receive information all the time, right? And the reason why I want to become, a, want to develop my own psychic abilities is because I want to just like, I, I just want to know things, not necessarily for other people, but for myself, because I have questions all the time. Like, what do I, sh what should I do next? You know, where should I go? You know, where can I find the next client? Just for example, right? I need answers to my questions when it comes to my business and life and relationships. Yes. So for you, do you always know what's going to happen for you in your life? No. Do you always have like certainty all the time, like clarity, answers? <laughs> oh my God, no. But for you, yes. Like I have clarity for you and I have clarity for like anyone that's connected to me, no. Why not? I, I think it's a, <laughs> I want to say it's a cruel joke, but it's not like I, there's a reason because if I'm, I just think that there needs to be mystery in my life and I need to make decisions without, um, I need to make my own decisions and, and feel have, and feel that I have free will. Right. Um, there's some things that I just know about my life but that's only like 5% of everything that happens. Right. And for my husband, like I can feel things maybe even 15, 20% for him, but because it's us and because we are us and because we are a, a mar like married, our lives are so intertwined. Right. And then friends, I can usually do more 50, 60, 70% with friends, but then like, it's always best to have like complete strangers because we're friends of friends because I don't know anything about them. And then I can, so like for you, I could tell you like what's going to happen right? With 95% probably accuracy. Um, but for myself, no, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish I could do that for myself. But you can ask your husband to do it for you too. Well, yeah, but he doesn't, but he's still connected to me too. So like he, you know, he'll be like, oh yes, I think that's going to be great. Like, you know, some of the projects I have, I'm like, how do you feel? I'm like, cause my mindset is all over the place. And he's like, no, I feel like it's gonna be great, you know, but like, <laughs> okay what's great for me is also great for him right so um yeah, yeah. 
Thanks for letting me know. Very... <laughs> I didn't know about that. Now I maybe I don't want to oh. become a psychic anymore since I don't get to have that privilege. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you do get it for other people though, like around you, you know. So that's that makes it exciting and mm-hmm. mostly exciting because there's sometimes that like I, I have this like, if someone's sick like with cancer or something or a debilitating disease, I can pretty much tell you the prognosis, like what's going to happen, how long they have, that sort of stuff. So sometimes it's not so fun because people will tell me like, you know, oh yeah, they're like, they had, they had cancer, they're in remission. And I'm just feeling like, oh my God, it's going to come back. Like, and I know it, you know? So that's not so fun. um, Knowing that. Um, But some of my friends have used it to their advantage, right? They're like, tell me, tell me, I want to know. I want to know how much time I have with them. Um, Cause it's important to know. I think when someone has days or even months to live, like, you know, to spend time with them and to love them and to support them. <laughs> I can feel like you are just, Oh my God, you know, getting all this um, energy. I know, no. sorry. It's like 10 o'clock for me and I'm like, oh, I have all this energy okay. now. <laughs> okay. okay, the last question that I have for oh, you. Oh, no, no, it's fine. I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> no, yeah, Um, I want to go back to your book. I'm just curious, like, why do you, why are you so passionate about children's book? I mean, is there, I mean, there must be a reason, right? Why oh, children? Yeah. I mean, I have, so I also write self-help books for adults, for, you know, but I feel like for children, I feel like they don't have enough resources and enough kind of self-help books for them. So essentially, I feel like I'm writing self-help books for kids. Um, and um, and it's so important because, well, you know why, honestly, too, because kids are so much more resilient than adults. Kids are... I mean, it depends on what happens to them and what their adversity is, but kids are so much more resilient and they, and they get over things faster because they don't have the BS that us as adults have, right. And all the programming and all the, you know, all the beliefs, self, the limiting beliefs. So kids are like, okay, yep, that sucks. Got it. I'm going to be sad. I'm going to cry. And then, okay, let's move on. You know? So I believe it needs to start with them. Like, I believe that healing needs to, they need to know that they can heal from anything. And they need to know that this stuff is going to happen and it's okay. And it's okay not to be okay. Like I use my smile method in all of the kids books that I, in the children's books that I write. And I literally have instructed or constructed the books such that you can, you know, when you're in each of the five stages and then afterwards there's like a discussion page right which now links to a you know which now links to a website where you can go on and like discuss with your family like all my books are about creating conversations and families as well that's beautiful wow i mean i cannot imagine kids just like doing self-help and going on the website and then go back to discuss with their family at the dinner table. I, well, yeah, I mean, but I, but that's what I want. Like I want the parents to be like, Oh my God, there's a website or there's a QR code, you know, like, mm-hmm. let me, let's do it. You know, like, let's talk about it. It's so important, especially with the pandemic. Right. I, I really want, that was the whole point I wrote the book and I've always wanted, I always wanted to write children's books. Always, always, always. And now I have two bestsellers. Uh, wow. <laughs> so, that's yeah. awesome. I'm going to get them for my nephew and niece. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That's great. Because, you know, we are all, adults are just big children. We were, you know, we were once kids. And that's how you, you mentioned about beliefs and all that and programming and conditioning. It's all because we developed our belief system as a kid when we were young, when we didn't know anything. That's how we absorb all this information for our peers, family, parents, teachers, right? So yeah, it's it's really important to develop uh, as a kid to have the tools and yeah, to have the tools, I would say, to how to deal with all these life challenges that we may, Absolutely. We may face when we grow up. Absolutely. Yeah. So thank you so much for everything that you do. Um, before we move on to our Thanks. final section, do you have anything yes. that you really want to share or really want to talk about? Perhaps I didn't ask you or didn't let you. Whew. Um, I think 
so I do I, I do a couple things, right? Like I, I help um, celebrities, influencers, and executives, kind of people who are influencers, right? Like in influence people, I help them overcome grief, like paralyzing grief. Um, I have an upcoming course on that. I think I want to mention that. Um, also I am helping people write what I call their bestsellers within. So I help them like get the book on paper or on, or on whatever digital <laughs> and then help them become international bestsellers as well. So I have a course on that as well. Um, I guess from an intuitive perspective, if I tap in, you know, I want everyone to know like that no matter what they're going through, I want to give people hope that you will not always feel this way and that um, things will get better. And the, the main thing you can do is acknowledge it, become aware of it, and then ask for help or ask for support. Thank you so much for taking your time out in your late evening. This has been such a transformation and life-changing conversation for me as well. Thank uh, you so much. Um, you have been very generous at so time, your time today. So we are going to end with our final okay. five rapid fire questions. And Uh-oh. here we go. I love that. Okay. <laughs> so every question has to be answered in one word or one sentence maximum. One word or one sentence maximum. Okay. Yeesh. Okay. I'm nervous. What is one thing you wish you knew earlier? To meet people where they're at. Beautiful. Second question. If you could live your life all over again, what would you do differently? Nothing. That was fast. Love it. <laughs> Third question. What is something you're trying to learn or curious about right now? Uh, um, how to... Um, I guess I'm always curious about how to find people's vulnerability spots quicker, faster, and um, and work with them. I think that's a lifelong probably journey. Wow, I love that. The next question is, if you have five minutes and the whole world was listening to you, what would you say? I would, well, <laughs> I would talk about my smile method as like a new approach to healing because the five stages of loss didn't really, don't really exist. It was complete. The it was supposed to, it was meant initially to be something completely different. Um, and I feel like we now need hope to heal. So my smile method for healing is all about moving forward and healing. Beautiful. That's what I would say. Beautiful. The last question is what brings you joy? Of course. Right. Whew. Um, vacation <laughs> I know I'm sorry I'm going on vacation next week so it's like all in my mind but I can tell you that like I was on vacation for a mini vacation um, in uh, Vieques Puerto Rico with my husband and we were on this beautiful beach and it was just him and I and I'm I'm obsessed with water and all I wanted to, all I kept doing was like, I'm going to start, I, I walk a lot. So I was walking on the beach and then I just received all these downloads of things that I should be doing or that I get to do or that I want to do. And, and the energy was just insane and amazing. Um, so like, I'm excited for the next vacation because, uh, because I don't have the clitter clatter and, and all the, the gibberish that happens during my day. Right. Mm -hmm when I'm not focusing on everything I need to do, I receive so much information. So receiving information brings me joy and talking to clients brings me joy. Yeah, for sure. yeah. And vacation, of course, brings you joy. I think it's important to <laughs> remind ourselves, to tell ourselves that we need vacation, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Personally, I love, I love to travel. I travel a lot. So that's how I meet people. Great. Well. Yeah. And so tell my listeners where they can find you online. Sure. Um, so I am Seth Elliott.com. Um, one L one T. So I am Seth Elliott.com. You can find me there. Um, on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, I am at Seth Elliott Santoro. Um, and then on LinkedIn and and <laughs> I'm trying to think. Uh, Twitter, like I'm on at Seth E Santoro. So um, if you type in Seth Elliott Santoro, I should come up everywhere. 
Okay, okay. All right, guys. I hope you love and enjoy this episode. Go follow Seth. Go to his website. Get his book. I'll put all the links in the show notes below. So make sure you go and check it out and connect with him. If you are not following me, follow me at joyan.chan on Instagram. And please take a screenshot of this episode if you are listening or if you are watching. Tell me and say, what is your biggest takeaway from this episode? And if you have any question, you know where to find us. You can just comment below or send us a DM. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss another episode. And I will always leave you the same way as I leave you with every other episode. Show up. The world needs you and you need you. Thanks for listening and I wish you all a joyful and amazing day ahead. Thanks again to our sponsor, Get the Law of Attraction. Follow them on Instagram for daily spiritual enrichment and encouragement, especially if your spiritual ice cream cone is melting a bit, you will get a fresh scoop of your favorite flavor of spiritual encouragement and insights. Find your with and listeners will get $25 off when you go to their website and use promo code JOYAN, J-O-Y-A-N when you sign up for their Law of Attraction course and gratitude journal. Once again, that is Joyan J-O-Y-A-N, for $25 off, and their links are in the show notes below.